Friends, Scrubs, The Office, Parks and Rec, Superstore, what do all these shows have in common? They aren't at the forefront of television, but they are consistently mid. Which is sometimes what we need. The lows are never particularly low. Excusing you, Scrubs. Oh, good God. Med school. But the highs, they can be really high. I don't think I'm alone when I say that I've rewatched about six plus season shows more than once, multiple times. I am dying right now. I want to put it on TV and cease to exist for three hours. Me and my fiance just finished Superstore, my second watch through, and because it's comfy, we just restarted it the following night with our dinner. Doesn't mean I don't appreciate the hard hitters, but to get me going on a show like that takes some real motivation. As goofy as that sounds, I gotta be focused, in the mood, ready to take on the weight of something heavy, that emotional baggage. For example, I enjoyed The Boys. Logically, I should have watched Gen Z, right? No, I, I have no idea what happens in that show yet. And I don't know if I ever will. I do feel at times that the consistent rewatching of mid TV has absolutely rotted my brain. But that doesn't mean I want TV shows to stop producing 22 episode a season filler filled silly shows. I can't admit to being a fan of Big Bang Theory or its little brother Young Sheldon. But there is a reason Jim Parsons was getting paid fat fucking stacks come the end of the show. I always come home from work or school to my parents just consuming the shit like it was Adderall. Was it ever really that funny? Probably not, but it got a few chuckles out of them, which is just enough to keep you going. It's comfy cozy core. These shows offered a weird alternate reality where communication never really mattered and the daily hijinks they found themselves in weren't going to drive them to the brink of psychosis like it would a normal person. And as humans, we just crave that weird little suffering that these people go through. It's like crack. They would keep people's eyes glued to TV channels for hours at a time, consuming advert after advert. But now you barely see these shows cracking 10 episodes a season? Why? Dreaming services killed the traditional setup. But why, Ryan? I hear you screaming out as if you don't already know. You see, back in the day, these channels couldn't have fresh new content filling up all 24 hours of their broadcasting schedules. But they also couldn't just have their audiences turning on the television to black screens. In comes, as the Americans like to call it, sitcoms. They started fairly simple, family-like drama days and turned into one of the biggest poolers for these networks. Relatable silly comedy, aha little kid is bad at school, how do we deal with this in a fun silly kind of way? Hey you guys! Audiences grow attached to these characters, oftentimes aging up with the actors. You would pair these shows with their networks because you couldn't just access it on DVD, VHS, YouTube or Netflix. So the network's name was always relevant. Ad companies would want to put their money into them and then the shows would hit syndication. The network would effectively lease out the rights of the show to different networks, which would then add money to their already outrageous buckets of cash while getting the actors big fat residual paychecks. Yeah, cool. But how did streaming kill this rock solid, never set to fail system? When Big Bad Mr. Netflix came along, they didn't need to rely on ad times. <coughs> At least then. They wanted you to pay your sub and stay on the site as long as possible. They bought off all the rights to these multi-season shows, which as a consumer, let's be real, is kinda great. Yeah. All these episodes at your fingertips for like 10 quid a month and no advert breaks, why would you watch your pre-established favourite shows on terrestrial TV for minutes when you can open up your laptop and watch two seasons of Community while lying in a bed curled up wondering how you ended up there? The shows transitioned to be mainly shown on streaming services because that's where people went and thus the advertisers don't want to be the networks big bucks because their numbers are way down and you know what is a sure thing when it comes to tv production it costs a boatload of money and even more when you have to pay the actors who are only getting more and more famous a boatload of cash too exciting i earned this i wiped tables for it i steamed milk for it and it was totally not worth it i hear you calling distantly in the back why does netflix just make their own again money it's much cheaper to make multiple shorter season shows for less money and see what sticks for a season or two rather than commit to a classic 22 episode model that might not work and was a big old waste of pennies so yes it's partially streaming services fault but it's also my fault and yours you know what really makes these shows great they're pre-existing you find them finished with a little bow on top with six seasons in a movie there's no commitment there we're all dirty sluts jumping from show to show like the free bird we were meant to be. We aren't waiting to watch the next episode of a sitcom seven days from now. We've moved on to the new flavour of the week. I'm not waiting for that. Now I know that I'm definitely missing out on some of these shows that probably are big in America, but here's the thing. I don't live there, and as it turns out, neither does the rest of the world, America. And I'm sure these shows will be on streaming in five years. 
totally negating this whole video. That's why I said it's sort of thing. But for real, this is just a feeling I've had for a while and I want to talk about it. If you can get me access to these shows that are to the caliber of what's already existing right now, sign me the fuck up. I'm ready to sit on my couch like a degenerate for hours on end, forming parasocial relationships with problematic and annoying characters. Now I'm off to go vegetate on my sofa.